automated site replication between multiple Minio instances. That's what we're going to see in this video. If you want to learn more, stick with me. Hello, what's up, guys? Medium Guy here, and welcome to the next video on my channel. So if you have watched the previous videos in this video series dedicated to Minio, you should actually now be familiar with the active active site replication feature that comes out of the box with the Minio official image. But the problem on the previous video was that we actually had to do all the configurations manually on the web user interface. So basically in this video we're going to see how to automate all that process with the Minio client that is a CLI tool and actually by use of a script file that we'll actually use to automate all this process. So I've got the timestamps down below. If you want to skip this part where I'm going to actually explain a little about the site replication, feel free to skip this part. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So over here on the site replication official documentation, we can actually see a schematic of how the site replication actually is implemented. So over here we can see that we've got to instances of Minio and actually these two instances are in a active active cluster so basically by active active we mean that any changes that made to instance 1 will be actually replicated to the instance 2 and vice versa any changes made to the instance 2 will be actually replicated to the instance 1 also. So basically because this replication is active active we can simply put a load balancer in between the clients and the minio cluster so basically the requests will be load balanced between the instances of minio cluster and actually no matter which instance of the minio the request has been routed to the changes will actually be replicated to the other instances also so actually i've created a diagram over here which is kind of showing the same thing we've got our client applications interface with a load balancer over here which is actually backed up with two minio instances with active active replication and a single drive that is provided to each instance of minio so in order to actually implement this scenario, I'll move to the VS code over here and on the Minio directory on my GitHub repository where I'll put all the files and configurations and any other stuff that I create on my videos for which you can find the link down in the description section. So as you can see, I've got a Docker Compose file that actually has three services one being the init container that will actually set up the replication between the instances of the minio that will also actually be created by this docker compose file so i've got a minio one service and minio two service both using the official minio image with a random tag and actually both has two ports mapped inside them one being related to the s3 api server and the other being related to the web interface that we'll actually use to interact with the API server. So on the volume section of the both Minio instances, I've got a directory map to slash data inside the container. So just keep in mind that this volume is different with the volume that is mounted to the Minio2 instance. So the command that will be run on the container that will be created is the server dash dash console address and I pass the port number of the web interface that is exactly the same port that is mapped to the outside the container and lastly I've passed the slash data which is exactly the same directory that I've mapped the directory from my machine to inside the container and over here on the environment variable section I've got two environment variables one being the root user and the other the root password and lastly I've passed the restart policy to always so basically by any reason these containers fail or gets destroyed the docker daemon will actually ensure to recreate these containers so another point over here is that I'm going to actually use the root user and password to implement the site replication between these two instances you can actually create other users dedicated to implement the site replication between these two instances 
So right over here as the first service in this docker compose file you can actually see that I'm using the minio slash mc which is the minio client official image and as the entry point I'm actually executing the init.sh file that I've mapped to inside the container from my local machine. So right over here on the environment variables section we can see that I've passed two environment variables prefix with the mc underline host underline minio1 and minio2 so basically these will be the alias names of the minio instances that the minio client can actually use to interact with these minio instances so just keep in mind that i've used the exact same credentials on the environment variables that i've passed to inside the init service so next we're going to see the init.sh file that will be mounted inside the container and it is all the logic that will actually implement the site replication between any instances of minio that we pass as environment variables. So if we take a look over here I have actually tried to grab the hosts from the env command and grab each line that has mc underline host so next right over here I've grabbed the alias names of the minio instances passed as environment variables so in this section the script file will actually wait for all the minio hosts to be actually responding so it'll actually sleep for five seconds if each of the minio hosts are not in a responding status so lastly over here using a for loop and the minio client cli i've actually tried to grab the replication information of each instance so basically if it is set on the mc admin replicate info actually that alias is already part of the replication and if it is not found in the replication information i'm actually appending the instance which is equivalent to the alias name to this variable over here and lastly i'll use this variable to actually add the non-replicated instances to the site replication so actually this logic will be run for each alias name that is extracted from the environment variables and lastly right over here if there is any non-replicated instances by using the mc admin replicate add command i'm actually appending the non-replicated instances to the site replication and next right over here i'll simply echo the alias names that are newly added to the site replication or right over here if no non-replicated instances are found the script will go ahead and output the replication already set up to the log outputs so basically because this script grabs the hosts and alias names from the environment variables we can simply add another instances as environment variables over here to actually extend our site replication configuration so with these in order to see in action the implementation of site replication between these two instances of minio i'll actually move to the terminal over here i'll hit ls to make sure i'm in the exact same directory that i've got my docker compose and init.sh file so simply by saying docker compose up dash d i'll hit enter and as i can see a network and each of the containers have been created attaching to all these containers and if i say docker compose ps i should be able to see the init container with the exit code zero also i can see both my minio services with the state up and running and the exact same ports of map to inside the container i can see right over here so if i say docker compose logs dash f to follow the logs and dash dash tail 100 to grab the latest 100 lines from each container so right over here on the logs related to the init service i can see that it actually throws an error for the grep command that is not found in the latest image of the minio slash mc so i'll hit ctrl c and i'll go back to the docker compose file over here and i'll actually pass the tag that actually has the grep and curl command inside it because actually i have also used the curl command in order to wait for all the hosts to be in a responding status so i'll hit save and go back to the terminal over here again i'll say docker compose up dash d 
I'll hit enter and I can see that my init service has been recreated and again if I hit docker compose logs on the section that is related to the init service I can see on the output a non-replicated instance has been found which is the minio1 also the minio2 and over here I can see that the requested sites were configured for the replication successfully so basically as I can see over here minio1 and minio2 instances has been added to the site replication so right now I should have my both instances of minio up and running and also configured in the site replication so in order to see this in action I'll move to the browser over here I'll move to the localhost port 9001 and hit my credentials to actually log into the web interface and on the left menu over here if I go to the site replication section I can see that the minio1 and minio2 are now configured as the replicated sites also if I go to the localhost 9021 which is the port for the second instance I'll hit login again and again if I go to the site replication section I can see that the both instances are configured as the replicated sites so right now the thing that I'm going to do is create a bucket I'll pass a name and I'll hit create bucket button over here and I can see that my first bucket has been successfully created by moving to the object browser over here I'll select the bucket that I just created and I'm just going to upload some random files so I selected my files and as a result I can see that the files have been successfully uploaded to this bucket over here also if I go back to the instance one I'll hit refresh and because I'm on the localhost with different ports for my two instances the authentication gets mixed and actually logs out on the other instances that I've actually logged in previously so again I'll try to log back in and on the object browser section I can see that my bucket has successfully created and if I go inside this bucket I can see my both files have been replicated to this instance also so as the last point I'll actually try to add more instances to this site replication cluster so if I go to the VS code over here I'll actually try to copy paste this configuration over here and change the numbers to three so right now I'm actually ready to deploy another instance of minio I'll hit save to save this docker compose file and go back to the terminal over here I'll hit ctrl c to exit out of the logs and if I say docker compose op d the thing that I forgot is to add the third instance as an environment variable over here so basically if I see the logs I can see that the third instance has been created and up and running but on the init logs I can see that no new instances have been added to the cluster so if I go back to the docker compose over here I'll try to add another line and pass the third instance with the minio3 name and minio3 as the host which is exactly the same as the service name in this docker compose file so I'll hit save go back to the terminal hit ctrl c and again I'll say docker compose op d again which will actually recreate my init service and if I say docker compose logs again on the logs related to the init service I can see that the new instance have been added to the site replication which is exactly the minio3 instance so if I go to the browser and go to the site replication section I can see that the minio3 has been added to the site replication successfully so actually on the object browser over here I'll try to upload some more files and right now that I uploaded some new files I'll actually try to access the third instance on the port 9031 
I'll hit enter. Over here, I'll pass my credentials that I defined on the Docker Compose file. So I can see on the object browser that my bucket has successfully replicated also to this instance. And if I go inside this bucket, I can actually see two of my three files. So basically, it is a matter of time in order for the MinIO site replication to detect all the files and actually replicate to newly added instance to the MinIO site replication. So that's all for this video and I hope you learned something new in this one. If you have any questions, any recommendations, of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below. Also let me know if you have any problems with this script file that actually handles the implementation of the site replication between the MinIO instances. Also, don't forget to give a visit to my channel where you can find other videos about other cool technologies and also you can find a playlist dedicated to MinIO in which you can learn and deep dive inside implementing MinIO as Docker containers. So if you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel which will actually motivate me to create more free contents like this. And with that, that's all for this video and I hope to see you in the next videos.